Hi, my name is Shane Silas. Welcome to Mockup Monday number 46, where I try to show you something cool. Last time I talked to you guys about uh, mainly about my uh, mini arcade cabinet, uh, but at the very end I mentioned a uh, kit that I got that I was planning on putting together, uh, this uh, Sun Founder uh, Quadruped uh, kit. And I've now uh, put it together and I basically just want to you know, show you guys uh, how it works, give a little demo, and uh, then talk a little bit about the build process and um, show you some, uh, some pictures from that. This is the, uh, the quadruped. Um, and here you can see this is the, uh, the control board. The brains are right here. This is an Arduino Nano. Uh, this is a radio frequency um, uh, add-on. The biggest board underneath is a relay board for controlling all the motors. It also has an on-off switch. It's powered by uh, a set of batteries. These are kind of uh, different. Um, I mean, it looks like a just like a big uh, AA battery, but it's some particular 3.7 uh, 6800 uh, milliamp uh, hour batteries. The kit did not come with these batteries. Um, I purchased these separately, um, but they weren't. Uh, they weren't like uh, expensive and they came with a charger, so um, that was fine. So this kit also comes with a remote control, um, which is uh, a really cool feature. Some kits, you can actually find uh, quadruped kits that uh, the remote control is separate and expensive. Um, so, uh, so this kit, uh, so here we've got the same kind of Arduino Nano again. We've got the same RFID, or, sorry, uh, radio frequency uh, chip uh, add-on that this is uh, sending, you know, messages to the uh, the robot. And then we've got just a joystick and another on-off switch, and it's powered by the same kind of uh, batteries. So <clears throat> I'm just going to, uh, you know, take a little video of uh, this thing working on the floor. Um, and all right, so. Here's the robot and the controller. I want to keep the controller in view so you can actually you know, see it. Um, I'm going to turn on the robot. All right. Got some nice uh, servo sounds there. I'm going to turn on the controller. And when I push forward, it goes forward. Even on this hardwood, uh, when I push backward, it goes backward. When I push to the left, it begins to turn left. When I push right, it begins to turn right. And if I don't do anything, it'll just settle. So one thing you'll notice is if I push forward, it goes basically up, uh, it takes two steps, or, or uh, each leg takes a step. Uh, or two legs will take a step if you push uh, forward or backward. Um, but this kit is, is open source, so if you wanted to have kind of a finer grain control than that, you can obviously change that, um, which I think is one of the really excellent benefits to this kit. Um, all right, so that's my demo. All right, so you got to see this uh, this kit in uh, in action a little bit. Um, this comes with uh, with code. Uh, this is one of the things that I think is uh, really uh, spectacular about this kit. It's open source, uh, so the the code that's running on the on the Arduino here for the uh, transmitter and for the crawling receiver uh, is is open source. You can take a look at it. You can change it. You can modify it. Um, there is also uh, code that comes uh, with this for doing a kind of a dance um, thing. I haven't actually uh, loaded it up and, and tried it out yet, but it looks cool. It looks like it's more of like a stationary thing where you can kind of uh, get it to do other cool stuff rather than just crawling. Um, I mean, this is one of those things where things can look great and you could have a great demo video, and yet when you put it together and you actually get the you know real world test of it, it could turn into junk, you know, where it's like, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work well enough for you to actually do anything with it. But um, I've been really uh, pleasantly surprised by how, how well this uh, works. All right, so let me 
show you um, a little bit about the uh, the build. So here's the box that it came in. Uh, basically, when I first opened it, you've got 12 individually uh, packaged servos. This is a 12 degree of freedom uh, machine. Um, and you've got everything placed in there. It comes with supposedly all the tools that you need. Um, it, uh, it includes this uh, screwdriver, which, uh, which is handy. Um, it comes with, uh, basically everything is on these uh, acrylic, uh, you know, plates that, that look uh, like uh, this. You have to peel the backings, not a big deal. Um, my, uh, my wife helped me out with this. Thank you, hon. Um, all of the uh, pieces are individually labeled. I was uh, pretty happy to find this because sometimes kits come and, you know, it's, it's a jumble of pieces and you're not sure which is which and you have to start measuring things, maybe. Um, and uh, some of the things are difficult to discern, so I was really happy that each of the pieces in this are individually packaged and labeled exactly as they're uh, said in the instructions, which was uh, uh, just... A very nice, uh, you know, feature of the kit. Um, this is just me, uh, you know, putting this, uh, putting this together. One thing that um, was a a little bit uh, trying. It, it wasn't hard, um, but uh, basically, each of the places where the servos connects, it connects to these uh, little uh, plastic wheels that you have to affix to the uh, the acrylic, and. Uh, there are pilot holes for the screws to go in, but these are tiny screws, so it was pretty easy to just kind of torque the heads right off these screws, even though I'm doing it, you know, manually, trying to be gentle. Um, so uh, that's something to watch out for. You can see I've, I torqued two of these uh, screws, um, the heads right off. Oops. Um, and th that wasn't all. I, I did that some more times. and. Honestly, putting these eight screws on each of these little plastic uh, uh, servo uh, connectors was, it was, it's not hard, it's just a little tedious. So if you can get a friend or a spouse or a partner to help you out with that, uh, it'll go much more quickly. I actually ended up uh, kind of doing half one day, half the next day. Um, so here I'm just kind of putting it uh, together. Oh, this was an interesting thing. So you'll notice I have all the servos connected uh, to the Arduino um, while I'm putting it together. Uh, this is what the instructions specify. Um, and uh, there's a good reason for it because they want the basically the zero point of the servo to be at a particular point when you, uh, when you place it into the... Uh, into these uh, servo holds, right? So um, otherwise you'll have all these random, you know, positions. So it makes perfect sense. But while you're actually like putting this thing together, essentially it's almost like you have you a living thing that's kind of writhing, you know, because it'll react to you trying to screw it in there. And if you, uh, you know, change something's position, it'll try to get back. So it feels like you're working on something that's alive, and that was a interesting, weird feeling. All right, not much to say about this, just the same thing is going on. It's, it's on while I'm trying to get it uh, into the right place. All right, it's coming together. All right, almost there. Um, one thing that I do recommend doing is um, labeling these servos with the numbers that are specified uh, in the instructions um, 1 through uh, 12 on both uh, the servo itself and on the connector um, they I mean it's you can kind of backtrack to to find it but I think it does just make things a, a bit easier I did it with just a red permanent marker and it's totally uh, not noticeable unless you know to look for it all right, here it is actually all put together. And this is probably my, the closest thing I can do to having a glamour shot. And, uh, and here it is, um, uh, you know, actually on, and I think I'm calibrating it. Now, this was something that I thought was pretty ingenious. They have uh, this, uh, this calibration grid. It's really just a, a centimeter grid. Um, and what they 
they also give you uh, a little acrylic you know ruler and what you do is you set up the quadruped and you measure before you do anything before you try to make it walk or anything you measure where is it that the legs are actually ending up um, on all three axes on the x y and z so and with this measurement um, that's one of the things that I think really helps us get uh, achieve uh, the uh, the gates that you see in the video that they have and actually get that kind of uh, uh, gate uh, at home all right so that's uh, that's basically my quadruped kit it is a hundred and sixty dollars it is from Sun founder um, I highly recommend it um, I think it's a really cool kit um, I'm going to try to find some interesting ways to uh, play around with this. It is um, not, uh, it's basically the same thing, the same kind of uh, body design that I've been using for uh, Quadruple Sumo. So maybe there's some kind of synergy, uh, you know, we could have with this. Or perhaps, you know, maybe there's a you know, way you could do some kind of, uh, you know, leap motion control with, you know, a real uh, quadruped. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, if you are here locally, uh, we're doing a, uh, Vermont Game Developers Meetup at, uh, Farrow Hall in UVM on, uh, Thursday, uh, this Thursday, uh, July, uh, 23rd at 6.30. Um, we have, uh, Fisher, um, uh, one of our members will be giving a tutorial on Construct 2. And yeah, uh, uh, if you're local, I encourage you to come and check it out. All right, that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for watching.